What is up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel today. We will be reacting to Missing Rings Kyle Larson 2024. Now I'm guessing this is going to be about him missing out on the final championship race this season. Um, don't even get me started. I'm still recovering. And just so you know, just so everybody is aware, just to annoy everyone, I will be rooting for Joey this weekend in the stream. So um, <laughs> be prepared for that. But uh, this video was requested by one of my Patreon members because, you know, a lot of you know that my favourites are obviously Kyle Larson and Ross Chastain. Obviously, Chastain wasn't even in the playoffs, but um, I was rooting for Kyle Larson to get to the final four. Did he make it? No. So uh, all of you are coming at me now and requesting these videos, which you know are going to annoy me. But it's fine. I'm looking forward to it. So I'll just shut up and we'll get straight into it. Kyle Larson is one of the best NASCAR drivers of this millennium so far. Bold when statement there. When he came over to Hendrick Motorsports in 2021, he just flat out dominated, winning 10 of the 36 races I wish I could throughout have to watched his first Cup that Series season. championship. Always but watching NASCAR winning that season. NASCAR has changed happened. a lot even since then. A next-gen car that has tightened the field has changed the big picture of things in the long term. And yeah. on the 2024 scale, one of the big changes heading in was a starting schedule of two super speedways. While not being great for Larson, the season would be insured pretty early. Weiss, Larson, and Reddick have finished 1-2. Larson the winner both times. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. And that was all Kyle Larson putting his car in the right spot in front of Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick. He has won quite a few races this season still, though. Momentum. This whole race is just why, Kyle like the last like four race weekends, I was certain he was going to make it to the final four, but the job done. it's just the way it goes sometimes. All day long, Kyle Larson. Two of the best in the business come off turn number four. Reddick got within a car length, but Kyle Larson scores his 24th career win for Rick Hendrick and Chevrolet. While not to start 24 on with the win, That's, Larson you know, would be able to nab the regular season speed. lead early with consistency, leading as well into a May that fully revolved around him in the world of racing, starting at Kansas. Chris Buescher back down on the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Larson's going to have one more shot at it, and it's going to become a cat and mouse game as you get into turn three. Which direction to go? Where do you go? Larson See, some of these top, races I don't Buescher, remember much. Outside. Because, and here comes like, Truex the first the few races the of the season, leaders. I only Coming watched, the like, the NASCAR Crash highlights. I, believe I, like, like I don't remember that finish. So I think close. I was still reacting to highlights this at that point. Um, I think it's him, Kevin. Uh -oh, boy. It wasn't until, like, halfway it's through the season that I actually Larson started watching the full coming. races. It's like the Kentucky Derby. Oh, my. Wow, look at that. Larson. That is crazy. Into the IndyCar scene, attempting the double. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad he's going to try and attempt the double again next year because Mother Nature really ruined that for him. He kept pace with the top dogs of IndyCar. And if he didn't get that penalty at the end in IndyCar, he would have done well. Of course, he'd be great at Charlotte. So the hype was real for something to surely be there for a special moment in motorsports history. The only thing that could stop him was himself and the weather. Rain would yeah. delay the start of Indianapolis and force him to miss the start of the 600. A late speeding penalty also ruined any shot of him mm -hmm. competing for the win. Yeah. And while he did make it back to Charlotte during the race, he'd never get a chance to actually race as the rain would end the 600 prematurely. Thus starting a pretty long debate, actually, over whether or not he deserved to be back in the playoffs and given a playoff waiver. Ultimately, after a lot of exec talk in NASCAR, he was granted such a thing. Though, oh, yeah, I remember debating about that. Memory. And that's exactly what he's doing. So like, that's he's not fair, you know, it's not his fault. Larson Mother on the Nature. Upside. Side by side for the lead. Trade and paint. It's not over yet. He's still on the inside. He's going to have to get, what do you call it, dirty right here. He's going to have to push him up. I don't remember this one either. So you can see them both slipping and sliding around. Pushers I think I'm still watching the highlights now. at this point. I'm going to actually have to go back and look at which race was the first race that I watched the full thing for. It wasn't too long after... Larson at the Coke 600. Because I remember saying in that YouTube video, I'm going to start streaming. So 
He missed uh, everything that you've been talking about, Clint. Just don't make a mistake. It's just keep coming for Kyle Busch and everybody on that eight car. That's going to be unfortunate. Had a top five going. That's a tough one. Last lap. That is a tough one. Last corner. For Elk Grove, California's Kyle Larson, the 31 year old is going to power off turn 11. Take this little kink here to the checkered flag. And Kyle Larson scores his 26th career 26. win. 26. That's Ryan Priest, and he is trying to roll, but he's got a flat right rear tire. Out of four, will they see the white flag? Larson in front, Reddick running second. One more time around. And the 41 still isn't this moving. One. I don't see any way NASCAR lays the race the And there's the caution. Call. Larson's going to do it. Larson is going to yeah, win the Brickyard 400. This one was pretty recent. Priest started to roll. He couldn't continue. The caution comes out after they had received the white flag. And Kyle Larson gets his 27th career victory. And it comes hey, uh, with another crown jewel win. You can hear the crowd cheering the in the background. <laughs> the month of May that Kyle Larson had here trying to run his first Indy 500. The fans here absolutely showed him tons of love. Every time he'd come to pit road, they'd all stand up and cheer. It felt like that lap went on like, for so long. <laughs> it work out for him on that day, but it has today. While Larson was starting to roll, there was more off-track stories to be heard. One being Larson catching the airwaves for saying that he was a better all-around driver than Max Verstappen. Oh my god, here this we go again. That went on for months. Deal after a week or not, if he had not had such an embarrassing wreck at Michigan. And while thoroughly dominating a couple weeks later in Darlington, he would narrowly miss out on the regular season championship to Tyler Reddick. Mm. Though the opening two rounds, he would be able to lock in with race three wins even after struggles. Is on his way home. It has been a stellar first class performance under the lights in Bristol. Hey, uh... is the man. Cliff Daniels says, there you go, you took care of business. And we give you the updated playoff standings. Yeah, they're for Kyle Larson and the HendrickCars.com Chevy team. See, I was going to say, I feel like he's won Everybody quite a few races this season. Has been raving about the weather this week. Which is why I was sure he was going to make it to the final four, but sometimes this California kid things just turn just upside down. Dominant. And I feel like he that's what happened here. Positions on the opening couple of laps, and that was an omen. But for the second time in his career, Kyle Larson wins at the Roval. I the loved that track. I feel like the, the Roval has been like my favorite track this season, can't lie. It was actually Las really Vegas, good. But lost plenty of points the changes that they made of the stages, made for so many overtakes in that turn. Before having pit issues in the second stage, causing him to come back in and ruining his day. Leaving Vegas, he had an 11th place run and was still plus 29 over the cut line. And with Homestead on the horizon, there was still plenty of optimism for the five team and fans. But after more issues and mistakes, a win was all that really could save his day. And he looked to be doing that, battling Ryan Blaney at the end for that victory. Unfortunately, again, his Achilles heel of self-inflicted injuries continued. Stop. Don't remind me. No, no, don't. I don't want to. Watch. No, no, no. And Brown goes, Larson, can he catch it? He cannot. Great. Spins down in turn Beautiful. three. Beautiful. Thank you for reminding me of keep that. Rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. You're good. Keep rolling. Falling ultimately to 13th, Larson would go from leading the point side of the playoffs to being seven out of the top four heading into the championship four deciding race in Martinsville. Getting 12 stage points would have been able to help, but seeing how his teammate and other playoff drivers were running up front and possibly could win, it was going to be a win that he'd have to get to get through. Though, at the end, through strategy and some chicanery, Larson would end up being in the position yeah, to get so that close. Done. Yet, as like it he was went, on he was old the one tires. who had the lesser tires. Yeah. Meanwhile, his teammate Chase Elliott and fellow competitor Ryan Blaney had better tires and better cars. And that ruined down, me. <laughs> Elliott eventually getting by, and then this is when the heartbreak started for me. Ryan Blaney. 
With 71 laps led, he would have to settle for a third place run as Ryan Blaney got himself from the outside. Blaney was on one in, and Larson over the weekend. He was getting real aggressive. Looking in. While the controversy quite around the 20 and the 24 did briefly give some hope that maybe the five could trip their way into contention, it was all for naught. Ultimately, his teammate, William Byron, would make it in. And Larson, well, the best he could finish in 2024 would be fifth in the points. Aww. And that leaves many to wonder. What if Kyle Larson could have attempted and maybe even won the 600? How much could that have changed? What if Las Vegas and Homestead had just a bunch of what ifs? I hate it when executed races that's on his like part and the team's part. All you can think about what after a season. What is this happened? What is this happened? Like Kyle Larson could have captured his missing ring. Well, I guess we'll never know, and we'll have to wait till next season to see uh, <laughs> who wins the Cup Series in 2025. But for now. We'll just settle for the championship race this weekend. But that was a very good video. Um, I did think he had won quite a few races this season. But there's been like so much going on for me motorsport-wise <laughs> this year. I've gotten into... like Before I was just watching F1 and I've gotten into NASCAR. And then I was watching IndyCar at one point. Like getting into it. So I've kind of like forgotten like what's going on through the season of NASCAR. So that was actually quite helpful for me. And like I said, I am streaming the championship race this weekend. So if you do want to join in, um, I think the race is going to be at like 8 p.m. UK time for me. Um, so whatever time that is for you will be the time that I am streaming on Twitch on Sunday evening um, for the final four. Like I said, I was rooting for Kyle Larson, but he's no longer in it. So um, I know that most people, there were quite a few people in the stream last weekend wanting, wanting Blaney to make it to the final four. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of like Blaney fans, quite a few, quite a few people were rooting for Byron or Reddick. No one was rooting, rooting for Joey. Um, so I am going to be that bitch and root for Joey this weekend. Um, so if you want to join you can join um, my Twitch profile is linked down below. But yeah, that was a good video. So thank you to my Patreon members for requesting this video. And with that being said, if you have any other videos that you'd like me to react to, drop them in the comments and welcome my way through everybody's suggestions at the moment. If you did want to check out any of my other socials or become a Patreon member and get early access to videos like this or top priority over your suggestions, then you can do all of that down below. And if you want to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks, you can also do that by hitting the join button down below. But I hope you enjoyed today's reaction and I will catch you next time for the next one. Bye.